Hey, and welcome to another episode of Back From The Future, where we love to talk about technology from the past, the present, and the future. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a retro throwback from, I think, the 1960s. That is a recreation of the Ford GT40. Now, uh, the 40 comes from the fact that the car was 40 inches tall. Now, the GT40 has always been a favorite of mine for a very, very long time. It's very close to my heart. And, you know, even a movie came out during the pandemic with Matt Damon in it called Le Mans 66, as it was titled in America. Now, um, this car, I believe, was, I think, yeah, three-time Le Mans winner. Now, to buy one of these original cars, you're going to need a lot, a lot a lot of dough a lot of money and not everybody's got that kind of money however you can get a recreation of the car and a very good I would say a facsimile of it actually even better because with modern engineering techniques and materials and computational know-how that they didn't have so much back in the day these cars are a lot more faster probably a lot more safer and a lot more you know better handling than the original GT40s themselves now one of the um, major manufacturers in the game is called Tornado Sports Cars they're based in the UK near Birmingham there are other companies around the world in the US and funnily enough even in South Africa but Tornado is one of the biggest companies uh, definitely I would say in Europe anyway and uh, they've got some very very tasty cars they do um, they do a space frame they do an aluminium uh, monocoque and I think that uh, you know and I think they're the only ones who do the aluminium monocoque and also they do a world's first day carbon monocoque I don't know much about it and I also think they're the only company that um, do a GT40 with a Coyote V8, uh, Ford V8 um, engine in it. Uh, I stand to be corrected, but I think they're the only ones. And uh, you know, the, I've met the owner, very, very nice guy. There are a lot of these cars around, um, which says, which is a good thing because it tells you that these cars, it is possible to build these cars in your garage. Um, I know it comes with a fully comprehensive manual and CD. But today, without further ado, let's get um, onto the nitty gritty and have a look at this car. Now, I met Dave at a kit car show and he's going to show us around his GT40 recreation. And this is Dave with his uh, Tornado GT40. Dave, would you like to tell us a little bit about your GT40? I would be... Tell I'll, us the story behind it, mate. I'd be delighted. How did it all start? Okay, so I used to be a biker, and we used to go to France annually and ride them like we stole them. And then the inevitable happened, and I've got a metal plate in my arm, and I smashed my leg up, and the missus said, it's me or, bike, or, or no more bikes. So I decided, kind of regrettably with hindsight, 
website that the bike had to go. So lying in my hospital bed, I thought, what am I going to do next? I need, I need a, you know, it's, it's like a constant midlife crisis, or in my case, it's probably a later life crisis now. But I thought I'd build a kit car, and sitting in the in the ward for about a month and a half, I was, I was flicking through the magazines, and I was looking at caterums and uh, Westfields and things like that, and I thought, that's what I need to do, because I've got no, or I had no engineering experience and no, really no skills at all. So I thought that would do as a starter. And then the family visited and at the time they ran a small racing team. And they said, oh, that would be great, Dave. Yeah, we'll come round and we'll build it over the weekend for you. And it wasn't quite what I had in mind. I thought, no, I need something that's going to keep me occupied for a couple of years. Uh, so I steered myself away from uh, caterums, found Tornado on the website, and this is the end result. And to be honest, I would say to anybody, yeah, if you've got time and are relatively good with your, uh, you know, uh, creative, doing creative stuff, you could build this. The car comes, and this isn't an advert for Tornado, but the car comes with a build manual and everything you see here I bought from Tornado. So I have had no compatibility issues whatsoever. Everything fitted, every part I bought came with a little bag with all the nuts and bolts in it. So really and truly. So you, ins you put this together yourself, did you? Yes, I put it together at uh, home in the garage. Even though your background is not engineering? Absolutely. That's amazing, that's amazing. You do don't you wanna... need to be an engineer to build this. So do you want to talk us a little bit about, say, uh, let's start with the engine. Okay, so this is a nine, the cast engine, the cast block is a 1960s Ford 302 originally, which has now got a bigger crankshaft in it. It's a 347, which I think, I'll probably be corrected on this, is about 5.7 litre. And again, with a Mark 1 GT40, the original cars had eight stacks, Webers, not Holly carburetors, and I wanted to go for a bit of uh, originality, if you like. But bearing in mind, I'm not an engineer, I've had, I've, I've read stories where Webers are difficult to keep on song, and if you leave them all winter, you're gonna have a trouble starting it. They don't, that's right, they're difficult to balance as well, aren't they? That's the word I was looking for, they're difficult to balance. This is fuel injected, eight stack and I have to tell you uh, with the benefit of hindsight it's pretty bulletproof it doesn't give me any problems you can leave it six eight weeks go in the garage fire it up and it goes you can drive it for two hours stop to fill it up with fuel leave leave the garage it starts on the button uh, and, and it'll tick over all day and it doesn't complain. Did you build the engine yourself or did no, you sir. install it yourself? I What's installed it myself. The engine came, uh, I bought from Tornado, but they're all imported direct from the States, bench run. I did put the heads on it and the intake manifold on it myself. Uh, and thereafter, I took it to a, ro a guy on a rolling road in Yorkshire to uh, have it set up. Bad, you built engines in the past at all? No, that was the first time, wow, I, that is a testament. I, I bought myself an engine hoist and to be honest with all the body off the access here is not too not too bad yeah. and I put the engine in myself. There's only six bolts hold the whole thing in. Two, yeah. on, two one each side of the block, two on the gearbox and that's... To, two bolts to put the... Yeah. Two, two bolts, these big bolts, I don't know whether you can see them, there's two big bolts here hold wow. uh, on the engine mounts, hold the engine in and there's four at the back of the gearbox there wow. and that's pretty much it. So it doesn't take very long to put it in and out. Wow. Uh, it's just a case of really removing all the ancillaries. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they go on after the engine's in. Right. And I you fitted the clutch uh, and the pressure plate and everything else myself and what made life easy there is Tornado supplied me with a, uh, a bespoke bell housing for that so there's no adapter plate so I just bolted the whole thing together I actually put the engine gearbox and bell housing in in a one piece so it wasn't assembled in the car there's a cross brace here comes out and you can swing the whole thing and then it went in without too much trouble okay what about the bodywork was it hard to put together yeah, to to, well it's not hard to put together the bodywork comes but it's oversized uh, probably five or six mil on all the seams is trimmable and it's really a, it's really a question of getting it done in the right order so from the manual because I do remember this 
the only fixed measurement on the whole body, on the whole body really, is bolting these. We call this the spider, the bit, the top of the middle. If you bolt that, the right, the right distance out from the chassis and the right distance forward, bolt that down. And when that's bolted in place, just the back end, not the front, you can position the rear body section to the back of the spider. And when you've got this gap down here, if I shut this down, when you've got the rear body section fitted to the spider with the correct gap all the way down, or as good as you can get, you fit the sill to the wheel arch of the uh, rear body section. And when the sill is bolted to the uh, chassis, you move to the front, and position the front body section so the wheel arch is in the right place and, and that fits on, the, on a, uh, a deformable structure at the front of the car. So then you've basically got the spider, the rear body section, the sill and the front section in the right position and when you've done that you pull the front of the spider down to achieve the right gap there and bolt that down and then the screen flips in. And the last bit, probably the most challenging bit to be honest, is the doors. Oh right, yeah, oh, yeah. go on. If, no, if, if you've never fitted a GT40 door, it's not, it's not the, uh, it's the most simple thing in life. The problem with them is really if there are so many different planes to fit and get the, uh, the um, shut line correct. So it's not without its challenges. But to be fair, it isn't that difficult. I mean, it's just time consuming. You've just got to take your time. And this particular car, uh, unlike the majority, is not a space frame chassis. This is a monocoque chassis. So with, uh, with two full tanks of fuel uh, and me at an IVA test, I think the car came in at about 950 kilos. Wow, which that's is incredible. Modern supercars come in at one and a half, 1.8 tons. This is really long. 950 kilos, that's, that's knocking on the door of a Lotus Elise, isn't it? There's no weight to it. It's, yeah. if, you, if you can see in here, I've, there's a little. I've deliberately left it uncovered. Actually, there's a little bit of the chassis there. You can see, yeah. which is honeycomb aluminium, which has got a bit of epoxy in it. But um, yeah, so the whole car, basically, apart from the rear engine cradle, is an epo uh, a glued aluminium chassis. What I'll do is, I'll open, if you can open that other door, we'll go in and you can just point out bits of the interior. Is that all right? Yeah. So, do you want to tell us about the interior? Okay. So so moving to the interior of the car, as you can see, there's not a lot of space. It's a very snug fit, isn't it? It's a very snug fit. But I'm six foot tall, uh, and I don't have a problem with this. In fact, so much so, I don't even have the optional gurney bubble. Uh, because what's happened is a monocoque chassis has the pedal box mounted to the floor. So instead of the pedals hanging, they're coming up. Uh, and in fact, it, I've achieved so much leg space, in, leg room in this one, the, uh, I've had to extend the rods from the master cylinders to bring the pedals back towards me. So I could fully depress, so I could get enough uh, movement on them. Otherwise I couldn't, I could, it, it, they'd be just too far away. I take it that's the brake line, is it? Yes, now, uh, how, how hard this was is it a to flat, plumb this? This is a very flat, fl flawed car. There's no space under the car particularly. So all the lines, that's the throttle cable. Uh, uh, the clutch and the uh, and the rear brake line are running down the side of the passenger tunnel there. Uh, as long as you get all that done before you fit the engine, it doesn't produce any major problems because there's nothing in the way of it. And the cooling pipes run down this central tunnel. Okay. Uh, so if I was to be perfectly honest, I suppose it, it does get a bit warm uh, from time to time, but people say, uh, you have to fit air conditioning. This car has no air conditioning, and I don't really suffer so much. So I was going to put helicopter vents in the in the in the windows here, but I've not found it necessary so far, and it's been quite a warm summer. But uh, I think one of the major differences, which we didn't cover in the engine, I've got a an electric water pump. Right. Which again, I could pro I stand to be corrected, but in the brochure, I think it says it's some it pumps something like 40 gallons a minute, which sounds unbelievable. So much so the cooling fans on this car don't even come on it, it's never overheated for me because the electric water pumps working at full 
full, yeah. full speed even at tick over which are mechanical. Yeah, because if the rads are at the front they've got so much sort of uh, volume area to just cool yeah. themselves by the time they get back the to the engine. The water runs right up here, yeah, the, the, water, the electric water pump is still pumping its maximum volume at tick over because it's electric yeah. unlike a mechanical one. What so happens if, the, if there's a failure in the water pump? I've got a big warning light down here. Oh brilliant. Which is on constantly when I'm running the car, it's a little green LED. Okay. If that ever goes out I'll stop the car. Cool. Okay. But apart from that, do you want to talk us to about yeah, the so dash? Yeah. So in terms of the dash, um, uh, I went for a racing look with this car. I mean, yeah. most of them, to be honest, are carpeted. I didn't bother. Listen, let's be honest. The design of the doors. If you take it out in a huge thunderstorm, which I never have, they I think they'll liable to leak. So I thought rather than let the carpets get wet, I wouldn't have any. So I've gone for the racing look. No carpets. A couple of rubber mats at the very front here for your for your yeah. heels when you're driving. The dash, yeah. I looked at all sorts of options. Uh, some of them are just sprayed black. I looked at upholstery, leather upholstery, but it wouldn't really have gone with what the look I was looking for. So this is actually a crinkle spray finish, which um, I've seen, apparently fighter jets have it. It's supposed to be anti-glare, which is really handy, because you can see I've got a big strip of uh, sun visor up here, and it's not, right. for, it's not for show. It really does stop the glare, because there's no I can sun back. Yeah, so you want well, the roof so low as well. Yeah, you're looking up, you, aren't you? and it looks quite claustrophobic, but you don't notice it when you're driving. Yeah. But this, I couldn't spray this myself. Apparently, this is a nightmare to spray. I took it to a Bentley restorer's uh, mm. near Goodwood, funnily enough, where I live, mm. uh, and they uh, they did it for me. And how well does it handle the road? Uh, well, to be honest, I would be describe it best as a license loser. Yeah. You have to be, it's a little noisy, most... Uh, Is the back end twitchy at all? No, I've not found, I've found it extremely neutral. It's got anti-roll bars front and back. I've found the handling extremely neutral and amazing. I mean, this car is miles lighter than an original GT40. It's more powerful than original GT40. It's wow. got better brakes than an original GT40. In terms of pure performance, it's a, a lot, it's far superior really, even with my novice building skills. So uh, I've got a, a bias adjustable brake system, which to be honest, I would never use. I've got it wound fairly far forward for yeah. self-defense. I don't want the rear wheels locking up. And I've, I've, what I've done, I've fitted the fuse panel here. Mm. So all the major fuses for the car, rather than being scattered around and having to look for them, I've got them listed on the door panel here yeah. and I've, I've, I've got the panel there. So. Does the front bonnet open? Yeah, sure, we'll go and do that now. Oh. I'm going <laughs> to swing a bit, mind your head. Wow, that's an impressive bit of engineering that, isn't it? You can see that is that looks beautiful. Well, uh, this is a well. Have, the originals didn't have servos. That's sort of no, the brakes no. on this are far superior to that. It's, and you can see what I mean. It's really it's almost a single seater. Yeah. Body. There's nothing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything's really so beautiful strong. put into place, isn't it? That is amazing. So those are the twin servos, yeah. yeah. I mean, this single hit nearest dam at 200 miles an hour, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. 70, if you're brave, uh, 70, it's <laughs> on a price. 2000. <laughs> Uh, Sorry, you're saying at 70? Uh, in terms of performance, uh, obviously I've never, <laughs> certainly no. never had it anywhere near flat out, but at 70 miles an hour, you're pulling about 2,000 RPM, it'll safely go to six and a half. Theoretically, I uh, that well, out, I don't yeah. know, somewhere, so two, four and a bit will be 140, yeah, it should be good for 200 mile an hour, I would suggest. Uh, Interestingly, the engine pr provides so much torque, it's a five-speed gearbox, you can cruise in fifth at 30 mile an hour. That's so you can, you can go all the way from 30 to wherever in one gear. That's insane. And, um, Do you want to open the whole front or not? Come on then, if you can open the whole front for us, uh, I'd love to see that. And I take it this is all fiberglass, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, these are pretty, these are pretty flimsy panels, really. There's not yeah. all the weight to it. No, look at that, there's not much to it, isn't it? It's all box sectioned aluminium, isn't it? 
Yeah, it's it, as I say, it's a monocoque. It's just it's it's a carbon fibre. Left. I don't know whether you can see any. There's no there's no bits exposed there. If you come around here. You can see most of it's about an inch thick. The floor pan is about half an inch thick. You can just yeah. see the, the edge of the monocoque there at the That's floor. That's right, yeah. And there's a little uh, wooden rub strip in front of it. Dave, thanks again for showing us your Tornado GT40 replica. And uh, you make sure you have a lot of uh, motoring fun with it. Oh, That's right, thank you very much. Well, okay, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now, I wanted to thank Dave again for showing us around uh, his lovely car. It just goes to show that anybody who doesn't have the greatest engineering expertise can actually build one of these cars. And, you know, um, what more can I say? I'm actually very tempted to, at some point, potentially give it a try. Maybe if the channel kicks off, I can get enough money uh, from lovely dollars from YouTube and actually go out and buy a tornado kit. I am actually very, very tempted. I think it's going to be one of those things that I want to put on my bucket list before I leave this uh, lovely, beautiful earth is to build a GT40 recreation. And, it, you know, the tornado uh, sports cars kit definitely looks like a tempting offer. Um, it does look very easy to build uh, from what I can see and the factory give very good support on the phone as well I've been told they're a very reputable uh, company I think they've been going for 36 years so that is something to brag about if you want you know that uh, a company like that has been going so long so they must be doing something right so i hope you guys have in oh by the way before i finish i will leave a link to the website and everything so you can go and have a look yourself so i hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you liked this video please feel free to subscribe to our channel press the bell notification button and get notified when a new video comes out please leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, please leave comments and let us know what your thoughts and suggestions are for future videos. And we will see you in the future, if there is one.